Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, it's great to be back with our Celebrating Act 2 audience and John Mariani, our virtual gourmet. John, great to see you again. Thank um, you. Now, yeah. as you know, Art and I are on the West Coast, and uh, I don't get back e East very often, but one of the recollections I have is Mystic, Connecticut, a wonderful... Yeah. Seaport town, historic, good restaurants, uh, just a fun place to go. Not far from where we grew up in New Rochelle, right. and um, and certainly on the way to Boston. It's a great trip up the Northeast Coast. And I wondered, uh, because you wrote an article about uh, Mystic Connecticut not too long ago, um, give me an update. What's it like today? Well, Mystic and adjacent to it uh, is Stonington. They're kind of part of the same community. Uh, Stonington is not as uh, well-trammeled and tourist-driven as Mystic. And uh, Mystic is a great old seafaring town. If you've read Moby Dick, if you have any sense of the 19th century Yankee Clippers, this is where those things were built. And Mystic Seaport uh, made its fortunes from the whaling industry and building the ships there. So it's just full of, of history, very, very rich. It's, it's, it is, as you say, John, uh, for anybody who lives in New York or as we live in Westchester or anybody visiting from the, the West Coast, if you hop in a car, you can be a mystic in under two hours. You can also go to New Haven is south of it, which is uh, which is where Yale is, and they have great museums there. And then you move on to Providence, um, wonderful city where Brown University is, and you have um, Bristol, Connecticut, which is perfectly preserved uh, 19th century town. But yeah, mystic is is quite special because they have um, first of all they have a, mu a mystic art museum, and. At the beginning of the 20th century, uh, a lot of New York artists who just couldn't take the city, especially in summer, summer, summer. <laughs> <laughs> that was your Boston accent, I think. <laughs> uh, in summer, they would uh, hide to uh, Connecticut and in Mystic established a Mystic Connecticut um, school of artists who um, uh, all got together and painted and had a style which is very naturalistic and very uh, and uh, very much in evidence at this museum. Um, other than that, downtown, you can walk around downtown Mystic in under an hour. There's cute little shops and there's the big dog and there's, there is a Mystic Pizza. Mystic Pizza still exists from the famous movie. Um, the, the Mystic Pizza preceded the famous movie. Um, but it is still there, it's changed hands. There's a better one called Nana's Pizza. And it has some terrific restaurants. So one is called the um, Shipwright's Daughter. They're a modern cuisine in a very old Wales Inn. Um, and there are, there's the uh, the Mystic Inn, which is also very old. They're all you know, clapboard and colonial uh, architecture. Uh, there's a place called the Oyster, uh, the Oyster Club, which if you like oysters, that's the place to go. Um, right next door is Noank. Uh, Noank, Connecticut is not much of a town. You could walk through that in about two minutes. But that's known for Abbots on the Rough, it's called. And by the rough, I mean it's literally sitting on a dock. The lobster fishermen bring their um, their catch up to their catch up to the dock. The lobsters are taken out, put into the pots and, and, and steamed or cooked, and you eat them right there on the dock, fresh with you do not get so lobsters uh, Abbott in the rough is terrific and it's less than less than 10 minutes from from uh, mystic uh, mystic's greatest lure as I said because of its whaling background is its museum its open air outdoor museum which covers several acres and you could wander in there you know as I said you could walk through mystic in less than an hour you could spend, easily spend three hours um, in the Mystic Seaport Museum, which is very, very well done. But one thing, they are constantly in the process of restoring um, old ships from the 19th century. Um, they were the ones who restored the Mayflower to uh, the original flower crashed and burned a long time ago. Yeah. But they just reconstructed that and did a fabulous job, all not using any special saws and material well they did they do use modern equipment but everything that's in those um in those uh, uh bilges 
uh, and, and the masks and everything are done exactly according to how they were once done. And you watch the workmen do it. These guys are very, very dedicated guys and women who uh, spend their lives working on these restorations. So you have three or four ships like that um, and three or four ships that are finished that you can go on. There's one which is a summer camp for children um, who can stay there on board for I think it's a week eat their meals there and learn about tying knots and and mass it's it's wonderful um to sign up for that i haven't done it but i'm sure if i were a kid i would really want to do that and then they have films certainly they have scrimshaw exhibitions and then they have the little town recreated the little town which rings a uh, commons uh at the shipboard museum um so in the middle you have the the green commons and then all around it you have these uh, they go from quite primitive when Mystic first began, shacks, to up to great mansions because people became very, very wealthy from uh, from from uh, the whaling industry. And in between, you have some very, very fine houses. You also will find, as they had back in the 19th century, the place to go buy your rope, and you see it being made. Um, you know, you and you see these ropes. They must have, you know. 30, 40, 50 different types of ropes that have specific tasks on board a ship and so tightly wound. And you see how once it was done on a spindle and then they mechanized it and and, and speed up the process. Um, all of that is there. Then you can go to the, the pharmacy next door and you can go to where they went to church. I mean, it's just a, a living village, but it's not hokey. And I don't mean to say that Disneyland or Disney World is hokey. I think Walt Disney did a fabulous job. It is what it is. <clears throat> but this is the real McCoy, and it doesn't look much different uh, than it did. Um, so it, it's one of the one of those great, great museums, outdoor museums, as I said, in the United States. And it's a gateway to Groton, Connecticut, where they make the submarines. Yes. And as you said, on to Providence and on to Boston. Yeah. And air up to uh, New Hampshire, Vermont, and the coast of Maine, which is uh, extremely beautiful throughout the fall. This is, that's good. This is le leaf peeper season. So, uh, and boy, do they get a lot of, a lot of leaf peepers. So I would yeah. stay on weekends yeah. if you can. And it's, John, it's, uh, just yeah. a, quick, a quick aside, um, you remember the old South Street Seaport Museum in New York City under the Brooklyn Bridge? Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful place, I thought. Uh, lasted only about 10 years, and it went uh, belly up. And um, I wonder, do you happen to know whether Mystic Connecticut acquired any of those ships that were owned by the old sailing ships and things that were owned? It was a lighthouse boat, things like that, that were owned by the South Street Seaport. I always wonder where they went. Uh, frankly, I believe that although you're right about the museum and um, South Street Seaport has been closed in by Wall Street skyscrapers and so forth, and the uh, the restaurants that used to be there are no longer there, so it's uh, it, it's not what it once was. But I believe that all of the boats, the lighthouse and the masted schooner, are still there. Oh. Yeah, you know, so those you can still uh, visit and, and go on. This is way down the end of Manhattan, for those who don't know about it. And yeah. uh, it's yeah. also a wonderful place to visit. Well, in its day, that was a wonderful museum, although it, it never rivaled Mystic Connecticut, I have to say. Yeah, yep. and I, I thank you, uh, John, because I lived in uh, 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 New Yorker, but lived in Brockton, Connecticut for three or four years, and uh, constantly going back and forth visiting relatives. And uh, we would do it in a, a non-stop trip of four, four and a half hours. But every so often, probably once a year, uh, when we wanted to get out and stretch our legs and maybe have a bite to eat, uh, Mystic was always a, a place that was comfortable to go. It was mm. uh, far more authentic than Disneyland, uh, uh, which was near us, which I loved as a kid and loved as a grandparent bring kids to. But uh, Mystic always had that sense of uh, uh, being genuine. Uh, or, or much closer to being uh, the kind of place that would have existed uh, with the crafts that existed at the time uh, to build and repair the ships. Uh, and your description of, of Mystic and the surrounding areas brings back great memories because it's just as easy off the I-95 uh, yeah. 
and uh, uh, and it really is it is a, a nice place, comfortable place to visit. You don't feel like you're being uh, 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 being treated as a tourist or coming in and buy something. Yeah, they do that, but it's a very comfortable place to be. And only ten miles away is the hideous Mohegan Sun, uh, <laughs> owned by Native Americans. And what's interesting is that if you're in Mystic and you get on this lovely bucolic rural country road, Connecticut country road, it brings you by these beautiful pastoral green farms and uh, old brick wall, old stone walls, and you go for about 10 miles and you whine, and it's just beautiful. And there in the distance, you see what the mystic people who hate uh, Mohegan Sun, they call the Emerald City, because rising in the distance is this garish, green, monumental thing, looks like the mothership landed, and it's just it's just hard that you go inside. It's like every other casino anywhere, um, as, as as garish as you could possibly imagine. And um, when when we poked in, uh, not many people there um, at that time. So I don't know how it's doing. But the the uh, if you happen to be one sixteenth Indian or maybe one thirty second, I don't know, um, you could uh, in fact claim a, uh, a share of the winnings. <laughs> well, they're they're all trying to be Las Vegas, and they can't do it. So. No, Las Vegas is its own its own category. Of, oh, I love Las Vegas. Its garishness, the garishness of Las Vegas rises to the level of art, fine art. Well, I don't disagree with you. I don't particularly care for it that much now. But the old Las Vegas that you see most stunningly in um, uh, was it on Our Majesty's Secret Service. Uh, no, Diamonds Are Forever, mm -hmm. when Sinatra was there and uh, all the. Mm -hmm. That was neon garish and yeah. very, very cool. Yeah. Um, today, you know, most of those things look just uh, like you might as well be on Miami Beach or uh, or Santa Monica or something, you know. Okay, I want I want to I I don't mean to be rude, but I want to end with the image of Mystic Connecticut, not Las Vegas. You mean going from the garish back to the genuine? Yes, and <laughs> you know the most iconic. Um, image of Mr. Connecticut is this great old iron bridge, a drawbridge that goes up and down uh, yeah. every hour or so. That's yeah. smack in the center of town, and uh, everybody waits there to see it, like children and grown ups, to see the old bridge go yeah. up and down as one little sailboat goes through. Mm. Yeah. John, thanks a lot for the tour. My pleasure. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.